hi students today we are going to start with chapter 3 of political science class 12 book 1 and the topic is US hegemony in world politics in this particular chapter we are going to study that why is US is called to be a hegemon and what does hegemony implies and why the whole world regarded U.S. to be the sole hegemon or the superpower in global politics. The chapter starts with the first topic, that is, New World Order. The New World Order is a concept of post-Cold War politics. This particular term was given by the then U.S. President George W. Bush. This New world order implies that diplomatic techniques, armed control should be the ways of peaceful resolution among the countries. The concept of new world order came up in global politics because earlier to that the world has seen world wars like 1 and 2 and even the Cold War politics that you have gone through your chapter 1 and which even led to the disintegration of Soviet Union by 1991 that you came to know in your chapter 2. So thereby in chapter 3 we come up with the concept of new world order where every country should be given the priority, the importance and the most important point which has been focused in New World Order is to solve conflicts through diplomatic talks, through arms control, a post-Cold War technique through which one can bring peace world politics. Uh, the next topic is Clinton's years in US. Clinton was the U.S. President who came to power in USA for twice, once in the year 1992, the another in 1996. Uh, we talked about uh, Clinton as a president because the uniqueness of his period was that he talked about developing U.S. on a softer and more lighter way not only focusing on military power. His understanding of developing US on soft developments were giving priority for the domestic uh, development, trade and commerce within the country. Then he focused on saving the environment, focusing more on avoiding environmental degradation, talking about giving importance for the climate change, talking about survival of human beings, etc. However, we should also keep in mind that he not only talked about softer development as the then US president, but he equally focuses on military development like any other US president till date. The next topic is hegemony. What does hegemony stands for? Hegemony implies or it stands for domination of one superpower or one sole power in global politics. And at that point of time, I'm talking about the period in the post Cold War. And at that point of time, after the disintegration of USSR by 1991, USA became the only sole superpower and that superpower of US is called as the US hegemony or single dominance of US in global politics. world politics. Uh, the next topic is Clinton's years in US. 
Clinton was the U.S. president who came to power in USA for twice. Once in the year 1992, the another in 1996. Uh, we talked about uh, Clinton as a president because the uniqueness of his period was that he talked about developing U.S. on a softer and more lighter way not only focusing on military power. His understanding of developing US on soft developments were giving priority for the domestic uh, development, trade and commerce within the country. Then he focused on saving the environment, focusing more on avoiding environmental degradation, talking about giving importance for the climate change, talking about survival of human beings, etc. However, we should also keep in mind that he not only talked about softer development as the then US president, but he equally focuses on military development like any other US president till date. The next topic is hegemony. What does hegemony stands for? Hegemony implies or it stands for domination of one superpower or one sole power in global politics. And at that point of time, I'm talking about the period in the post Cold War. And at that point of time, after the disintegration of USSR by 1991, USA became the only sole superpower and that superpower of US is called as the US hegemony. Or now we will be talking about uh, three kinds of hegemony of USA. U.S. hegemony is known by its three types. Number one, U.S. as hard power. Number two, U.S. as soft power. Number three, U.S. as structural power. These three types are very simple. U.S. as hard power implies the military dominance of U.S.A. in global politics. It has been known that half of the UN budget even it focuses on how powerful USA is on military lines. USA gave its utmost importance to show its hegemony or dominance in global politics through its military strength. So US as hard power implies the dominance and strength of USA on military grounds. Number two, USA as soft power. USA as soft power comes into the other way around, on cultural lines, on food, on wearing of dresses. For example, popularity of blue jeans. It shows that USA plays a very dominant role even in the other countries because like for example, the youth of every nation, like in case of India, most of the Indian youths, uh, the most comfortable clothes that uh, you know, we feel is jeans. And this jeans comes from US. It is not the Indian origin. So this dominance of blue jeans or focusing on you know, Western food, giving priority to you know, um, junk foods are the examples of U.S. dominance or hegemony as soft power. And the third point, U.S. hegemony as structural powers means economic dominance of USA. That USA plays a very significant role in everyday life of the other countries as well. For example, many of the Indians are software you know, engineers in USA. 
half of the silicon valley is filled up with you know indian uh, people working in usa so that shows us dominance as structural power or dominance of us us hegemony on economic lines these are the three types of hegemony which is popular in world politics by usa now we will be discussing about invasion of iraq invasion of iraq took place in 19 march 2003 it was an operation taken by us on iraq it was officially called as operation iraqi freedom under this operation iraq was been attacked uh, by 40 nations which supported the us because us uh, blamed iraq to have uh, biological weapons however uno in the initial point of time did not support this attack on the part of usa on iraq but this attack was been done however in practical sense us could not prove the existence of biological weapons um, in iraq so thereby people there are also scholars and people who say that this attack was mainly done by usa to uh, to have a control over the oil fields in iraq so some of the consequences of this particular uh, uh, operation was that saddam hussein's regime could not remain stable in iraq number 1 number 2 3000 us soldiers were killed and even number 3 50000 or you know iraqi citizens were been killed due to this attack however many of the scholars even call this attack or operation iraqi freedom to be a personal attack done by usa for their own development and it has been said that you know they for their own personal development has destroyed a country and it is an example of us hegemony in global politics now we will be talking about constraints on us power number one probable constraint on us power can be its institutional architecture that is although you know us have its own executive you know it has its own you know branches it has its judiciary but it always give priority to its military so according to some scholars you know it can happen that you know sometimes it may create as a hurdle for usa and you know it can create a kind of constraint for usa to maintain its hegemony if a conflict starts between the military and the executive so that has been called as constraint from the institutional architecture then number 2 according to some scholars they also say that you know uh, sometimes you know it depends on the uh, us president that which one they are going to focus like for example you know george w bush and all they gave priority to the military as hard power us as hard power but uh, clinton gave into the softer issues you know hegemony as soft power so this dilemma between the hard and soft power of usa can also create a kind of constraint and obstacle for usa to maintain its hegemony and the final point of constraint can be created by the nato countries you have heard about nato you have heard about nam in the first chapter nato countries were those countries which were a part of usa during the cold war period and nam countries were those which did not or which decided not to join any of the two superpowers during the cold war period so it is a two way understanding according to some scholars they say that you know those nato countries which were an ally of usa in the cold war period may at times you know get together and create another hegemony or you know create another power against usa on the other hand there are also some who says that even the 
you know nato countries of the you know developing world or the third world countries like india you know africa etc they can come together and create a new power standing against or creating a constraint against us hegemony last topic of this particular chapter is how can us hegemony be overcome and indo us relations so we'll go through the three ways through which us hegemony can be overcome these three ways are been given by different scholars so number one way is bandwagon strategy bandwagon strategy is that you know you stay with usa extract its benefits you know take all the benefits from usa and create your own superpower no you turn to be developed even more than usa by taking the benefit out of it number 2 is height strategy height strategy is to remain as uh, you know uh, you know away from the us as much as possible and you know you create your own power like you know china does you know it is not a part of usa but it is you know by you know by having a height strategy by not informing anyone you know what they are doing and you know creating their own power and you know trying to end up us hegemony and number 3 is been you know called to be as a way you know that you know new you know nowadays uh, new ngos are coming up new intellectuals are coming up you know you know writers po- you know po- through poems through you know writings articles etc also social movement you know etc we can you know uh, write on the you know defects of us hegemony and we can end up we can overcome from its uh, dominance or you know uh hegemony power then the last topic of this particular chapter as i already said was indo us relation you know indo us relations in the present contemporary world it is good in contemporary times it is a new dimension seen it has been said that you know around 3000 peop- you know indian people works in silicon valley silicon valley is a part of you know usa it has been seen that you know many uh, startups have been taken up where you know indian peoples are you know are getting employment in usa so it has been said that relations are good however we have two sets of you know people uh, talking about it in one part you know some scholars say that it is good for you know india to maintain this kind of relation with usa that is the bang wagon strategy that you know let us extract the benefit that we can as much as possible last topic of this particular chapter is how can us hegemony be overcome and indo us relations so we'll go through the three ways through which us hegemony can be overcome these three ways are been given by different scholars so number one way is bandwagon strategy bandwagon strategy is that you know you stay with usa extract its benefits you know take all the benefits from usa and create your own superpower you no know, you turn to be developed even more than usa by taking the benefit out of it number 2 is height strategy height strategy is to remain as uh, you know uh, you know away from the us as much as possible and you know you create your own power like you know china does you know it is not a part of usa but it is you know by you know by having a high strategy by not informing anyone you know what they are doing and you know creating their own power and you not know, trying to end up us hegemony and number 3 is been you know called to be as a way you know that you know new you know nowadays uh, new ngos are coming up new intellectuals are coming up you know you know writers po- you know po- through poems through you know writings articles etc also social movement you know etc we can you know uh, write on the you know defects of us hegemony and we can end up we can overcome from its uh, dominance or you know uh, hegemony power then the last topic of this particular chapter as i already said was indo us relation you know indo us relations in the present contemporary world it is good in contemporary times it is a new dimension seen 
it has been said that you know around 3000 you know indian people works in silicon valley silicon valley is a part of you know usa it has been seen that you know many uh, startups have been taken up where you know indian people are uh, you know are getting employment in usa so it has been said the relations are good however we have two sets of you know people uh, talking about it in one part you know some scholars say that it is good for you know india to maintain this kind of relation with usa that is the bang wagon strategy that you know let us extract the benefit that we can as much as possible and however there are also scholars who says that you no know, it is uh, no you know, there is no point to take out and go for bank stra you know wagon strategy instead you no know, we you know we can have uh, the third policy that is you know to accommodate all the you know nato countries to uh, and india can be the new hegemon in uh, the global politics as a new emerging third world country and it is in this way that you know one can end up us hegemony we are going to add up uh, the 9/11 attack the 9/11 attack is the very popular attack on the us world trade center by the osama bin laden in your book you need the us response to the 9/11 attack so let's start with this topic it says that some arab terrorist hijacked four commercial us flights to attack some important places of us two of the aircrafts hitted the pillars of world trade center in new york and it leads to its demolition the third flight hitted the pentagon building while the fourth aircraft it came down and it crashed in some of the field of us due to some technical problem hence this particular attack is known as the 911 attack on the us government by the muslim fundamentalist terrorist groups it brought you know destruction violation and a loss of immense life and property thereby us government gave a very very violent reactions and they declared global war on terror and this reaction or us response to the 911 attack is known as operation enduring freedom which is said to be the end of the al qaeda and the taliban terrorist groups which were involved in the demolition of the world trade center or who were associated with the 911 attack however initially it could not destroy as a whole no operation enduring freedom in its initial stage did not destroy all the talibans and the you know terrorist groups together it was a very slow process but us managed to arrest and imprison many of the terrorist which were associated and they were mainly imprisoned in the naval base of cuba which is known as the guantamo bay this in that particular bay the terrorist are been put in such a way you now they are been present in such a way that even their own human rights are been violated they have been deprived of their human rights and the terrorist staying there they are not allowed to meet anyone even of their family members they they, they are they are said to be very wildly uh, you, you know you can say tortured in the guantamo bay in that naval base or prison of us which is located in cuba there you know you have also heard that you know much later on after the 911 attack you know us also managed to kill osama bin laden 
who, who was regarded to be the mastermind of 9-11 attack. So in this way, by killing Osama bin Laden and by keeping the other terrorists in the Guantamo Bay in Cuba, US showed its hegemony and response to, towards the 9-11 attack. With this, we ended your chapter 3, US hegemony chapter. In my next video, we'll be talking up about chapter 4, that is alternative centers of power. Till then, thank you.